I'm Jen Sigler and I'm a real estate agent in Kitchener Waterloo which is an hour outside of Toronto and today I am going to teach you about the difference between buying a freehold property versus buying a condo so a lot of people have different opinions when it comes to uh, owning a condominium versus owning freehold so what a condo means is your money is going to be pooled and you're gonna pay condo fees and then essentially those condo fees then take care of the property. Condos can be structured different ways, but sometimes that condo pool pays for amenities. So you have a pool, sometimes you have lockers, sometimes you have a party room, sometimes you have communal barbecues. Often there's a lot of different amenities that may or may not be offered. I find that some people really like to have these amenities with having still a small amount of space, but then are okay if they're gonna host a Super Bowl party because they can rent out the party room and yet they're not paying and heating that type of space. It's also just a different way of budgeting because you're paying out your fees but then you never have to pay for a roof repair you never have to pay for um, replacing windows because that's all going to be tied into the condo a word of caution when it comes to buying condos and something that you'll find is that in Ontario when you go to purchase a condo there's something called a status certificate that your real estate agent will order for you and what that status certificate uh, breaks down is where the money is being allotted by that condo board are they in a good financial position have they planned for um, repairs in the future are they at risk of a special assessment so is there any pending lawsuit or litigation or any concerns along those lines and have they set themselves up in a good financial position where probably the condo fees won't increase too heavily so I've seen condos that have all of a sudden had to skyrocket their fees and that's not something that you can then get out of if you've bought a condo and the fees jump you're in you're in it um, and it can impact value if it skyrockets to a point that's unreasonable then obviously your price will need to accommodate when it comes to freehold of course now you own it there is no fees that you're paying so what I recommend is almost set up a budgeting tool like you have a condo fee so make a list of the things that you're going to need to improve so if your roof is 10 years old maybe you need a new roof in five years start getting quotes on how much a roof is going to be or ask around say your roof is going to cost eight thousand dollars Take the $8,000, set it plan for four years, just in case things hit the fan, $2,000 divided into 12 uh, months and start setting that money aside into a slush fund. So for all my properties, I make sure that I have slush funds for the properties just so that if something goes wrong, I can access that money. You know things are going to need to be replaced, so make sure you're setting money aside so it's not a surprise. The condo fee, it's almost a forced savings. With freehold, you should be saving that money because you know that you're gonna need a roof and your house will not function without a roof. So don't wait until it needs to be replaced to say, ah, where are we gonna get the money? So that's something super important to know. Condo fees are different in the sense of they might have a lot more people around, they might be multi-residential, there may be amenities that you'll get that you wouldn't get with freehold, but then freehold you may get a backyard which you won't get with a condo, which is a different type of lifestyle. Um, but with a condo, you may get a more central location. So a lot of people I know like to be right uptown, therefore they want to have that walkability. Whereas a freehold, you might be outside of town or in a subdivision, so you'll need a car. So there's a trade-off in terms of what you're looking for. And I think it's super important to sort of ask these questions and also to be able to look at the condo and gauge, okay, where have the condo fees been for the last 10 years? Will that seem affordable? And depending on what stage of life you're in, maybe condo fees are better if you're retired so that you don't need to worry about lawn maintenance, you don't need to worry about taking care of things. And if you're someone that needs to be close to the hospital or you know, close to your workplace, I've had people that buy condos uptown because we had a lot of construction through development and he didn't want to be driving through the construction every day. So he bought a condo that he could get out and walk to his work. And it's all about lifestyle and what's going to be the easiest for you, for your business. And I think it's smart to kind of look at things and, and analyze. So I find that freehold is a great fit for some people and condos are a great fit for some people. I think if you're a single female that wants to get into the market and you can find an affordable condo, buy one. Get into the market. You don't have to worry about taking care of things. You're in a secure building. Often a lot of them will have front concierge or they'll have controlled entry, which is nice. Also for a lot of my snowbirds who spend their summers in Florida or the winter in Florida, they want to be able to lock their door and leave. And for six months, they don't want to have to worry about cutting the lawn and shoveling snow and all these things that come along with home ownership. 
So I think it's a good idea to sit down with your real estate agent and do a breakdown of your lifestyle, things you want to do, things you don't want to do, so you can get a good idea of what your lifestyle is going to look like and what's going to make the most amount of sense for you. Another thing to consider when it comes to lendability is the bank will look at a freehold mortgage and say, okay, you can afford $1,500 a month, so you might be able to purchase something at three fifty. dollars but if you are gonna have those set in condo fees, then you will only be able to afford maybe a $250 condo fee or $250,000 property with a $250 condo fee. And that's because they're factoring in that you have to pay those condo fees every month. So the bank is gonna look at, can you afford it? And I would argue for you to consider is if you're gonna buy at the 300 with freehold, but that's gonna stretch you thin, maybe reconsider because like I said, you should really be paying yourself your own condo fee for the improvements to your property and having that emergency fund because home ownership does come with things, washer and dryers break down, roofs leak, you know, furnaces go, AC go, you wanna make sure that you're set up so that you don't have to worry about those things because it's an investment and you wanna be able to protect it. And the worst, downfalls I've ever seen with people is them not taking care of their properties and then 10, 15 years come along, they haven't done any of those improvements and now they have to take a loss when they're selling or their home is damaged and it's gonna cost them so much more money when they could have just done it to begin with. Like a roof repair, for example, if you don't replace your roof when it needs to be replaced, now you start looking into moisture getting into the structure into the wood then leaking into your home now we have mold issues now we need new insulation now we might like we might need new trusses there's a lot of other factors that you need and it's super important that you just do it when you should do it look around make sure you're getting somebody that you trust that will do great work that's referred to you with a reasonable price point so that you can continue to protect your home which is super crucial so those are my tips and my advice when it comes to picking between both options. I think that you'll probably be more drawn to one. I find most people will look at a couple and then they know which way they want to go and trust the process and always follow your heart. Thanks so much. Take care.